everybody, my name is Rachel Nelson. I played water polo here at UCSB. So in preparation for um, the MCAT, which I had to take in order to apply for medical school, um, I did buy several books from um, the Kaplan test prep courses. Um, they were the subject matter breakdown of each subject that was going to be included on the MCAT. Um, so I'm a, I'm a very um, independently driven learner, and so those were, those were effective books for me to use. Um, so I essentially just was using those as an outline again for what to study and make sure that I could review those and um, pinpoint different areas that I didn't remember as well or some areas that I struggled with. Um, for me in particular, uh, physics is not my, my go-to subject <laughs> as um, a personal strong point. Um, so I definitely need to spend a little bit more time on physics. So I would, I would say as you're preparing for the MCAT, you don't necessarily have to spend a month studying for each subject that you are going to be tested on. If you feel more comfortable with any of those areas, then go ahead and have confidence in that. Go ahead and review the book um, or some kind of outline to know what type of material is going to be on there. Make sure you've, you're comfortable with that stuff. And then don't spend more time on that than you need to. So very just pinpoint and streamline your study plan for you in particular. Um, so that's essentially what I did when I was preparing for it. Um, I, I essentially, my job allowed me to study for it the entire year before I took it. Um, so I had um, the fortune of teaching the entire series of general and the entire series of organic chemistry up until the test date. So um, that material, if you have an opportunity to interact with the material in that way where you're teaching it, um, that is the best way to learn the material. That is unforgettable when you are looking at material and studying it with the intent to teach other people, meaning that you not only have to understand how it works the right way, but you also have to understand why it doesn't work the wrong way and be able to explain both of those ways. Um, so being uh, teaching the material, I think is the most, uh, the most effective way to learn anything, um, regardless of what you're exactly preparing for. Um, but um, preparing that way, that was definitely making it much easier for me to say that I did not need to spend that much time um, studying the Gen Chem or OChem um, in preparation for taking the MCAT. So I really was focusing on just learning and um, reiterating all those concepts that I had learned um, previous years from physics. Um, so it's a, I, I think the best advice for studying for the MCAT is really that just streamline your approach that's going to be best for you. Um, I know some of my, some of my friends and um, colleagues who have prepared for taking the MCAT have taken a, a test prep course where you're meeting once or twice a week in order to help out um, and guide the studying experience. And they found that those to be extremely useful. And um, I, I think that those are fantastic opportunities for people to help prepare for the exam. Um, but I just, I had taken a different approach because again, I had, um, I, I know myself very well to be an independent learner and I don't, I don't need to have an um, outside source in order to drive that studying. Um, but know yourself and use that information in order to prepare specifically for you. It's, it's not always the best guideline to look at what other people are doing, um, but to look and know exactly how you learn best and how is best to prepare for the exam. Um, with regards to test day, um, I, uh, I don't know if anyone's superstitious out there, but um, I had taken my test on Friday the 13th and I had also been assigned cubicle 13 um, <laughs> when I was taking my MCAT. So that was kind of a fun, like, preemptive. I tried to use it as a um, coincidental luck that is happening, hopefully. Uh, but um, yeah, it's don't, don't freak out the day of the test. Definitely get a good night's sleep beforehand. Um, there's have a good breakfast in the morning. Take care of yourself physically because it is an exhausting exam. Um, so it is about five hours long and um, you will be sitting down for a long time. Um, and it, it is a stressful situation, of course. You're trying to answer as many questions within a small amount of time. Um, but know that you're going to be okay. <laughs> it's, it will be fine. And honestly, worst comes to worst, you can always take it again. I did take the MCAT two times. Um, the second time that I took it, knowing all that information about what it's actually like to go and sit in the cubicle and uh, be there for about five hours, um, I, I had all of that um, 
from the first experience that I had so I knew exactly what to expect and because I had that expectation of what it would be like um, I felt like I was able to focus much more on what I was um, doing uh, problem solving wise so I, I did much better on the MCAT the second time that I took it compared to the first time so um, that's always an option for yourselves uh, so don't don't put so much pressure on your business selves for this the first time that you're taking